everyone, Dana here with Love Soul of Flowers. And today um, I just wanted to do a quick live about the topic of glycerin um, because we get this question asked a whole lot. And um, I just wanted to go over a little bit about glycerin, why people are starting to use glycerin and how I personally use it um, for myself. So um, what glycerin is? So glycerin, the one I use, this is the brand I use, but it doesn't matter. But um, vegetable glycerin um, is being used um, for flowers that are being dyed to keep them softer. And the softer they are, obviously, the less that they break. And so that is the purpose of glycerin, because I know people even ask us, I don't even understand the whole glycerin thing. So glycerin is used to make your flowers softer so that, hey, Deanna, that um, there's less breakage, especially if you're making a bouquet and you're having to push them hard against each other, or if you're shipping and it's going to bounce around the box. Um, yeah, so um, it's really kind of a funny story. So I don't know if uh, any of you knew, but before um, Sultan and Crisville sold loose flowers, they were actually making bouquets. And um, Sultan was actually the one who was dyeing the flowers. And he, back in 2016, used a combination of fabric dye, glycerin, and um, non-iodized salt. I don't know um, at all, you know, his recipe or anything. But last year when I went out to California um, in the summer, in June, he had brought out a box of flowers. Um, and this is before I even knew what glycerin was. Like I didn't even, I've never really heard of glycerin. I don't know what it's used for in real life. But he brought out a box of flowers that were three years old and they were still really soft and squishy. And but I didn't really think much of it then because I was happy with the paint I was using. And plus I used latex paint and I didn't use fabric dye. So although he had mentioned he had this really cool recipe, um, I didn't really ask much further because again, I wasn't going to switch the type of dye I was gonna use. But then a bunch of you solo ladies started sharing all the different types of recipes of how you can use glycerin with latex paint. Um, and then even the acrylic paints as well. So um, once I heard that, then obviously I started to read every what everyone was posting and um, sharing and there were different recipes and different ways to use it and I tried a little bit and it didn't work kind of great for me they were either too soft or they were bleeding um, and I think it's just because for your different kinds of paints and the different ways you do things um, you're gonna have to experiment okay so I'm gonna show you what I do and it's not the perfect way um, it's not um, the only way it's just the way that's working for my business and um, I'm gonna, again, I'm just gonna show you the recipe that I use, the way that I do it, but the best thing to do for you is to experiment with your paint, um, your colors of paints, how much you dilute paints, all of that is kind of an experimental thing. So again, I'm just gonna show you the way that um, I've figured it out where it's been like foolproof for me. So whenever I do it this way, it's always worked out. So that's the only reason why I just keep coming back to it. But someone might try it this way and it not be, you know, their favorite thing. But, um, sorry, was there a question about where to get it? I got mine on Amazon. It's a really, really big bottle and it's pretty cheap. I think they're in grocery stores as well. So, so yeah, so this is the way that I do it. It's the same measurement um, every time and it is vegetable. Vegetable. Plant-based is the one I use. Again, I'm not even sure there's like a huge um, difference in like brands or anything like that. Again, I have not done such crazy research about glycerin. I just um, am using um, what has worked for my business and that just seems to make them soft, but not so soft. Um, and they're not greasy, but they're still like pliable. Okay, so I already have my glycerin in this bucket. Okay, and I use this size bucket if I'm doing, um, you know, a large amount because you can actually even get a bigger bucket and just literally do handfuls of flowers at one time. Um, but so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you like a scoop. This isn't necessarily the size scoop that I use for this, but I fill up according again to your bucket size, whatever measuring it's gonna be. So if you have a small bowl or a small bucket, obviously you're gonna use a smaller measuring cup. But I use one of my measuring cup, whatever size I pick, of glycerin, and then three 
of hot water. So this water, it's kind of hot still. This water, um, I have microwaved it for two minutes. Okay, so it's pretty hot. My microwave gets it pretty hot. It's not boiling, but it's pretty hot. And so if I do one of these of glycerin, I do three of my hot water in the bucket. Okay. Okay. All right, so I do one measuring cup of glycerin to three of water. Okay, now just follow along because there's two different ways I'm gonna show you what to do. So in this way, where I did the one to three, I'm just stirring it up, the hot water, make sure it dissolves, make sure you really dissolve it well. Okay, so it's really dissolved in there. And then all I do is I take my raw flour, okay, and I'm gonna just dip it in there, and then make sure I shake it off, and then I put it down. Okay, so that's all I do, I go through all my flours, I dip them, I shake them off. And this way, I'm not worrying about like so much glycerin getting on it because all I'm doing it is a quick dip and it seals it, okay? And then I'm not worrying about adding it to paints or anything like that because um, here's also something I realized um, because I like to keep my paint mixtures for a good couple of weeks and when I added the glycerin directly to my latex paint, it did sometimes mess up the paint a little bit after a few weeks. But after I dipped them um, in my um, glycerin mixture, and again, I just did the, the one to three. I did a quick dip. I didn't hold them down there for a long time. I just dipped it and shook it out. Then I can go into my paint mixture. And this is the reason why um, I do it separately because I like to know my own measurements for paints and I don't like to mess with that going, oh, maybe I need more of that water glycerin mixture to make sure it's soft. I'm able to just dip it and get that glycerin in there and then dip it in my flowers. I mean, my flowers in my dye and not have to mess kind of with the dilution of my dye. So let me just show you. Okay. So I just, again, I dipped it in the glycerin and then I dipped it in, let me just go grab, I'm gonna grab, I didn't think about this beforehand. Let me go grab a flower that was in glycerin and I'll show you what it does real fast. Okay, sorry guys. So um, here are some flowers I did. Again, this was doing it where I um, dipped it in the glycerin first okay so they're nice and squishy again i didn't put it in my paint i did just a dip in the glycerin and water mixture first now it does add a step um, but i do usually do more than one flower at a time i usually just dunk a whole handful but as you can see they're nice and soft and squishy still but they're not let me see if i can get close they're not slimy because I see some people's maybe using a bit too much and it's like super shiny and glossy and I think it might be a little too much. But as you can see, my flower isn't like wet and you know, whatever, glossy looking, but it's still the super squishy. Okay. Now, if you are someone who wants to just do one step and be done with it, if you were going to, now again, I just experimented with it. You need to do your own experimentation, but if I was adding it to my paint directly, what I've been doing is two more scoops of water. So if I was doing it where it was my water source to my paint, I would do one to five, sometimes even one to six, depending on the color of my um, that I wanted to dye it in. So I'd add two or three more scoops to the glycerin mixture and then use that as my water to my paint. Um, and then again, you just dilute it as if you were using it as plain water, however you would do for your paint. So that's how I do mine. And they stay super squishy, but they're not that kind of weird shiny. So I feel like this percentage of glycerin is what was working for me. And the fact that I would dip it real fast and shake it off. And then, hey, Lacey. And then that just kind of worked for how I'm doing it. So. No, I literally, well, I actually, so 
Um, for instance, yesterday I dyed about 500 in one shot. So I literally had a big bucket and I dipped like 20 flowers, threw them to the side, 20 flowers, threw them to the side, 20 flowers, threw them to the side, and just like mass dunked them into this water glycerin mixture. And then I had the wet flowers and then I would dip them directly into the dye paint right after. So I don't wait for them to dry, okay? So again, this was in that glycerin water mixture and then I just dip it in my paint mixture. As you can see, let me hold it up over here. And it sticks. So that is what I do. And I use bare latex paint, but um, with the glycerin, I heard you can use any kind of paints. Um, yeah, so um, I had experimented for, like I said, for a while, and I couldn't find like the best plan of action for me because it was either getting like too shiny or whatever, and I was reading all the different recipes, but I'm like, but I needed a big box of them, you know, like I mean a big bottle of it, and so it was just kind of hard for me to figure out like how much I put in to mix with my paint and everything like that. So when I figured out that I could just do it separately, um, it really worked for me. So the separate part works for me. It does, um, you know, it does change um, the timing because you have to do two dips, but again, if you're mass dipping it, it really doesn't take too much time. Um, but I do like to do it separately because I feel like it's not over glycerined because you know when you're putting it in your dye you're really trying to like soak it all up so that your your coloring is very vibrant um, and if you do it beforehand you're not thinking about like how much you know to add or anything like that so again that's why I do it separately um, you guys should experiment and figure out what's the best recipe for you so if you're just getting on real fast again any measuring cup, so depending again on the size of your bucket. So this is the size of my bucket. So I did one glycerin and I did three waters and I made it hot water so that it dissolved. And again, I would just dip the flowers super fast, shook them out, put them to the side and then dip dyed them right after. If I was going to add the um, mixture directly to my paint as my water, I would do two or three more scoops of water before I added it to my paint. So, what ratio of water to bear? Um, Heather, it, there's no ratio for paint for me because, um, yes, I will show you how to mask up in a second. So, there is no um, recipe for like paint because some colors need more paint than water. So, like a red or a dark color or a blue, a navy, they need more paint than they need water but where a light pink, a blush, could use more water than paint. So that is something you should just literally have some flowers for testing. Um, and then you just keep adding more paint if you need it darker. So start out with less paint and keep going. Can you let the glycerin water mixture dry? Yes, you can. Eileen, it stays soft forever, but I just do it in the thing. Hold on, I missed a question, let me go back. Yes, Freda, actually, let me show you. I did dark flowers last night, and I'll show you. Look how so soft these are, look. Guys, these are skinned flowers. The water you use to do. Yes, that's what I meant. So Tom, that, that's what I was saying. That the water, I just add more water though in it. I dilute it a little bit more than when I'm just doing it as a dip. Did I make that? Did I not make that clear? So if I wanted to do, I can use this. This is my glycerin water. I can use this to pour into the paint as the water that dilutes your paint. I thought I said that, but if I didn't, that's what I meant. But I, I dilute it a little bit further than one to three. I do one to five if I'm going to add it to my paint. Okay, sorry if I didn't explain that well. Okay, but yeah, so skin flowers can do the same. So if you have trouble with your skin flowers, um, that will help those too. Let me scroll up. I, I saw that I mixed, missed some questions here. Hold on. What ratio barrier? Yes. Um, my paint is actually very thick, um, but this color itself didn't need a lot because it's yellow, but I usually do a lot of paint um, in my things. Let's see. Um, yeah, so oven drying, um, sometimes the glycerin will cause smoke, so I would leave your door open if you're using glycerin and in a ventilated area with the fan on. Okay, do you use the recipe for hers? 
I will show you how to mask dip in a second. Can you let glycerin dry? Can you put the one third mixture in a spray bottle? Um, Christine, I don't like to spray anything. I like to just dunk it. Um, I'm not really sure why you need to spray. Maybe if you're hand painting and you don't want it to be very wet, um, but I like to dip mine. Okay. Um, did I air dry the skin? Yes, this has been from last night. I didn't, um, Luann, this is, this was just out from last night. It's actually still a little bit wet. It's not completely dried. I did them last night and then I didn't get to them. So yeah, this water was pretty warm. Like at two minutes in the microwave, it's pretty hot. So it was, you want it to really be able to dissolve the glycerin really well. So, um, yeah, it was pretty hot, um, for that. Okay. So if I wanted to do multiple flowers, let me just grab some that I haven't done yet here. And again, I would use a bigger, bigger bucket if I wanted to, if I wanted to do like a whole lot at one time. So, I mean, you know, I just take all my flowers and I just um, stick them in there and I dunk them and then I shake it out and put it on my pan. So, and that's it. So, you know, just did six flowers in 10 seconds. Not bad. Just got something on that. Okay, so we did the glycerin first. You can, Stacy. You can let them dry, but I just do it all in the same process. I mean, there's not a need to let them dry or not let them dry, because um, once the glycerin is in there, it seals it. It'll stay sealed. Um, and again, after I have it, my mixture. This is just my regular paint ratio. And again, that's why I like to do it separately, just because I don't like to try to mess with my ratio with my water and my paint to try to make sure that I have enough glycerin or something in them. Oh yeah, Stacey, they're really soft. Um, so yeah, so I just do it separately, but it is an extra step and it is time consuming. But um, if you do it where you're mass dunking, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but again, if you wanted to add um, the glycerin directly to your paint, make sure that you do your glycerin and paint. Make sure that you do your glycerin and your paint, I mean, and your water mixture separately. Like don't put water, paint, and glycerin all together. So you have to do that whole dissolving the glycerin in your water first before you add that to your paint. Okay, so don't just put glycerin, globs of glycerin in your paint and water. You gotta make that same solution that I made where it's dissolved. Grace, I just put six of them in there. If I had a huge, huge bucket, I could do a hundred. <laughs> but I don't, have, I don't have that big of a bucket. But I did, you know, six that fit in that bucket. Um, but you, it's, you just literally dump them in and pull them out. So you, as many as can fit in your bucket is as many as you can do, um, at one time. So, um, so that's it. That's all you have to do. Can you go back after you've already painted them and spray them? Um, I heard that Camille that you can, um, I don't prefer to do that. I'm always afraid it might mess up the paint. Um, but, um, I, I heard you can, so, um, I would go for it. Um, glycerin is just like a sealant that softens. So I'm not really sure it matters when you put it on there. Yes. So Sultan said, yes, you can, and it's going to do the same thing. So, so yeah. So if you have some flowers that maybe you dye that are hanging around, why don't you dip them in the solution afterwards and see what happens? Again, I'm not really like, you know, the full knowledge here of all things glycerin, but this is what we do do. Thank you, you're awesome. Yeah, Stacy, you know why? Because I use such little, little water in general in my paints. And so when I was adding it as the water mixture to my paint, I wasn't getting like enough glycerin. And then I couldn't figure out the right recipe. And then I was using a big blob of it and then it felt wrong. So um, this just is just how I solved my problem. But you can do both. Again, this one mixture for if you're gonna dip it beforehand was one to three. So one of these of glycerin, three of these of water. Okay. Whatever measuring size you do. 
if you're going to add it to your paint, I usually add two to three more waters into that and then pour it into my paint. Um, and again, make sure your water's hot though, because you want it to be really, um, yeah, like this water doesn't feel gross and thick or anything like that, but um, you definitely want it to be diluted completely. You don't want blobs of glycerin and the glycerin you need to have hot so that it dissolves. Yes, Sultan just said, mix the water solution separate from your dye. Okay, again, don't just put paint, water, and a blob of glycerin, because that ain't gonna work, okay? So you have to make this solution before you do anything else. So you're either gonna use the solution alone to dip it, or you're gonna use it to pour into your paint. But either way, make sure you do this separately. Okay, if you use too much glycerin. Yeah, Eileen, like sometimes they, they would get like greasy. So, um, but this is not, let me show you again a flower that's done this way. You can see that they're not greasy. Um, so you can see they're not greasy, but they're also, and this is a skinned one, so it's a little bit obviously crunchier, but yeah. So you can see this is not shiny. Okay, I do let them dry. Um, in the oven, but then I also let them air dry for another like 48 hours with the glycerin because I want to make sure that it doesn't like bleed or anything like that. But um, it, if it's super, super shiny and greasy feeling, then you've done too much. But again, this is using the recipe I just showed you. As you can see, look, they're not shiny at all. Um, but look, they're super squishy. Okay, so they're still soft but they're not shiny at all. They don't feel wet. They don't feel gooey. Um, they are just nice and squishy without a weird sheen to it. This is another one I did a few days. Actually, this one I did a lot. These I did two weeks ago. Okay, so this is two weeks dry. Again, this is using the method that I just did. Again, you can see they're not shiny at all they don't look weird um like that greasy looking they're not um but look this is two weeks still super squishy the glycerin worked but again that so this was using the dip before method but again add some more water and you can add it directly to your paint if you want to do it that way too when i fluff my flowers after i dip dye sometimes there's raw spots towards the center. What do you mean raw spots, Anna? Maybe I'm not understanding. I don't understand the question. Maybe you can explain to me um, a little bit more. When I fluff my flowers after I dip dyeing, sometimes there's raw spots. Do you mean like spots that didn't have paint on them? I'm not sure your exact question. So if you can maybe explain it to me, I'm not figuring that out. Um, but yeah, so the skin, again, this one's like a little bit wet still, but this one, okay, so Anna, um, if you have like um, an eyedropper type thing, you can actually, like sometimes, let me find one here, hold on. So, um, I don't think I have any flowers that have like a center like that, but like in a new beauty, sometimes it's twisted and like the little, it's like it makes like an air bubble where the, the dye doesn't go down in there. So sometimes, well, when I do my dip dye, my dyeing, I put it in here and I really shake it, like shake, shake, shake. But um, you can also take an eyedropper or like, you know one of those baby boogie suckers? We use those too. And you can literally just do like a drop directly in the center and it'll drip down in there. Um, but I think the, uh, the other thing is, is make sure that you are having a deep enough dyeing um, bucket so that you really can stick your flower down in there and shake it around. So like, here's my dyeing bucket. So when I'm dyeing, you know, my paint's kind of filled up to the top. The whole flower gets completely submerged and shake it around. I'm kind of rough with mine because um, they're actually a little bit stronger than you think. But um, if they come out and you don't want to re-dip it, just use like an eyedropper, even like a little spoon. But even the spoon, sometimes when you do it, it literally like avoids that little air bubble center. Um, so I like to use like an eyedropper or like the nose sucker to squeeze it right in where I need it. But again, if you have your um, dye deep enough, 
you're gonna get to be able to like dunk it and scoop all the paint and it usually works out really good and swish it around like I swish my flowers around um, to make sure that it gets in there and then shake them off before I put them on my pan and then I bake them does anyone else have any last questions before I'm done again this is just kind of what I came up with that works where they're not too um, shiny and overdone but they're still nice and soft and squishy okay so again Solution always needs to be made separately, okay? I did, for a pre-dip, I did one to three. If I'm gonna add it to my paint, I do about one to five, one to six, and then add that into my paint. And um, it seems to work. Again, I'm using latex paint, so if you're using a different kind of dye, if you're doing fabric dye or acrylic paints, you may need to adjust your recipe. This is using um, latex paint, um, how I'm using it for this. So is that all the questions? If so, I hope this was helpful. Um, even just knowing, I know some people are like, I see the word glycerin and I don't even know what it means. I didn't either until I went out and saw that Sultan had soft flowers for like three years. And I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty interesting. Cause sometimes flowers, you know, they get harder with time and his were really, really soft after all those years. So um, when I found out that you can use it with latex paint too, that was really exciting. So it just took me a while to figure out the way that I liked it, where it could be like foolproof every time. So, all right, I don't see any more questions. Um, if you do watch this on the replay, um, you know, just um, ask your questions and I come through and I make sure that I reply to you um, directly. And make sure you share the video um, if other people are asking, you know, different ways to do it. This is just uh, two of the ways, one pre-dip and then one adding it with your paint. So. All right, everybody have a really good Sunday and um, we will see you sometime later this week with another tutorial.